In board gaming, all that really matters is what the best games are. These are our top 30 games by genre in 2022 here on Legendary Tactics. If you can give us 17 minutes of your time, all three creators at Legendary Tactics will give you our 10 favorite games by category. That's 30 games. Let us know whose list you like the best in the comments and what games you would replace on our lists. Welcome, Cax and Nato. Howdy. Hey, how are you? Real nice, thanks. So we're going to start here, and our first category is Area Control or War Games. So I'll go first on this one. I almost went with a Game of Thrones, the board game for this pick, but instead I decided that my top-ranked Area Control game at the moment is Root. And I'm specifically talking about the digital edition here. I love the asymmetrical factions. I love the replayability. I love the contrast between a light theme paired with complex decision-making, and I love how much strategy the game requires. What's your pick, Cax? I'm going with 1989. So when NATO and I sat down with this one, I was struck by how similar it really is to uh, the very popular Twilight Struggle. It's card driven, area control. Uh, I really like that it adds in power decks and it has a really neat heads up mechanic that uh, TS doesn't. So that's, that's mine. NATO, how about you? Well, I went with Cry Havoc, which is a game I've had for a few years. I just find this is a, has a really interesting flow to the game. It's very unique, and it feels very different from any other games that uh, are out there in the moment. And I like how you can scale the different levels of abilities of your individual faction, depending on your skill level and familiarity with the game. Um, our next category will be co-op or solo games. Flash, what's your pick? Well, I'm going to choose one that's both my current favorite game to play either in solo or with a group, and that's Horrified. It offers a puzzle-like challenge. It's a medium complexity game, lots of variety in how you defeat the classic monsters who incidentally have very nice miniatures, I think a little bit like Cry Havoc, Nato. And uh, there's lots of uh, strategy to this game. It's the kind of game I want to play over and over again on the same night and one my kids enjoy playing. I will confess my wife is not fond of this one. She doesn't enjoy the theme. But Cax, what's your co-op or solo game? Well, for the uh, co-op or solo game, I got to go with Robinson Caruso. Uh, I really like the theme of this game. It's, it's totally on point for me. Uh, I've got a lot of nostalgia with this game of playing with uh, my, my oldest children and uh, having a lot of fun there. Uh, I like, we uh, really enjoy the various challenges of surviving a difficult island and the different scenarios that offers uh, the, the, that the game offers. Uh, and now there's even an expansion, The Voyage of the Beagle, uh, that uh, has brought Charles Darwin into the fracas. Nato, how about you and your top co-op solo game? Well, for me, it has to be Andy and Abyss. Out of all the coin games, I find this one is the most fun to play solitaire. Uh, it has a simple uh, bot or flowchart to run compared to the other games, but there's still many, many decision points. Every game feels completely different depending on how the cards come out, and it is always, always a challenge. So let's shift to card-driven games. You're up, Flash. All right, well, one game that works really well with a group, especially with people who are familiar with and love Euchre, is The Crew Mission Deep Sea. And I, I could take or leave the theme. To me, that's not the part of the game that's really awesome. Um, I never thought I would see a campaign-style cooperative game where the central mechanic is trick-taking. So perhaps it's the fact that someone just mashed up two really radically different mechanisms and wrapped it up in such a way that I can play it with my parents. So it's just a really nice game to have in your back pocket for game night. And for you, Cax, I imagine the next pick will be uh, your hardest for you because you seem to really love strategy-based card games. Yes, indeed. Uh, but uh, for this one, I decided to go with Marvel Champions. Uh, I am a major sucker for anything superheroes, and uh, I was a massive fan of Sentinels of the Multiverse, and then Marvel Champions was released. And uh, I find this game offers a balanced level of complexity. Uh, it definitely immerses you in the Marvel Universe, and with new heroes and villains being released in sets, there's lots of room for this game to grow. Nato? Well, for me, uh, I would I would select for this category cards. And cards is not technically uh, available in analog form. It's only a digital uh, game, but it plays like exactly like a card game would. And there's 
a wide variety of different cards to use, synergies to build. It really offers a decent tactical challenge, um, but I also like that it can be pretty quick playing as well. Some games you can get in under five, 10 minutes. So um, some of them go longer, but I like that, uh, that aspect. So it's a nice, fun, uh, relatively quick card-based game. So Flash, I'm curious what your top dungeon crawler is. Well, this one, I stewed a little over it, but in the end, I have to go with Legends of Andor. It's one I think about a lot. I've enjoyed it with kids and adults. I played it with you two, in fact. And I like the storyline, the evolving quests, and I'm a sucker for a, a game that has a clever program for the bad guys. Uh, especially, I mean, this one, I think of it almost like a solo game where the bad guys have their own brain. But the only part I don't like is that like legacy games, when you've played all the missions, it's not like, it's not one I'm going to pick up and go back and redo for a very long time so uh, however I am sorely tempted to buy one of the many expansions like Journey to the North so and for you Cax I imagine if your first three picks are any measure then your favorite dungeon crawler is probably one with a strong theme <laughs> how did you guess it Flash <laughs> predictable <laughs> yes yes for dungeon crawlers uh, I'm traveling to another favorite thematic destination the Star Wars universe and Imperial Assault uh, I like how you can develop and build characters in the game. I'm all over the characters added into the game and find it's a great balance of die rolling and strategic movement and card placement. I enjoy having the, uh, the DM run the Imperial side while a bunch of buddies can try and gang up and defeat him. Nato, what's your favorite? Uh, for me, I chose uh, Mansions of Madness. And this is the, uh, the game with, uh, which has the app uh, as part of the the gameplay, and it's definitely, I think, the future of board gaming. Is there's a lot of uh, games out there that have an app. Uh, this is the first one that I had played, but it really gives it a great atmosphere. It tells a great story and and mixes up the uh, the monsters uh, and so forth, so you can have more replayability. And it is a great challenge. It feels like you've really accomplished something when you win. So that's my pick. And uh, what's your uh, what's your best Euro Flash? Well, I'm just getting into Terraforming Mars, the Ares expedition with UCAX, but I can't say it's my top pick because I haven't played it nearly enough to earn this coveted spot. So instead, I'm going with a classic. I've been playing it for a couple of years and really love it, Wingspan. I would say it's relatively complex as far as these go in terms of introducing it to new gamers, but I would also consider it a gateway game that might lure casual gamers into more complex games. Thematically, it's beautiful. I love the variable approaches you can take to the end game. Cax, what are you choosing for your Euro? Well, I just have one question. Wine, anyone? Nato, when you told me we'd be playing a game about making wine, I literally rolled my eyes. Yeah, then... I think that was Flash's experience as well. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd imagine uh, many people out there had the same. But uh, when we played Stonemeyer's Viticulture, I was blown away and I wanted to play more of it right away. And for me, that's always a sign of an excellent game. Uh, the complexity is a little on the light side, but the decision making and card management requirements along with the overall aesthetics of the game are where this game really shines. Nato, what's your favorite Euro? I would have to pick the Lords of Waterdeep. Um, it is such a classic worker placement. I d it wasn't the first worker placement I played, but it is one that just feels like it should be your, your first worker placement game. It's so easy to teach and to learn. It presents such an interesting tactical puzzle. Um, every single play seems to it seems to matter, and it's and there's many different routes to victory. It has a couple of great expansions. I just think it's such a great game, and it's one that everyone should try if they're at all interested in uh, worker placement games. So we're going to shift now to legacy or campaign games. Now, uh, what would you say your pick is, Flash? Well, it might be my favorite at the moment because it's the one that's living on the table in my back room permanently these <laughs> days. But I'm going with Gloomhaven: Jaws of the Lion. And it really takes a complicated game and it parcels it out slowly through some interesting and streamlined scenarios. It tells a compelling story which engages my kids and it moves fast enough that it feels like your character is growing. So for me, I never focus enough time to get the full value out of a game like the original Gloomhaven. I just don't spend that much time on a single game. So having a more compact game works well for me. And I think I know what your top legacy game is going to be, Kex, and I preemptively wholeheartedly agree. <laughs> All right, well, we'll see if you do in the end. <laughs> uh, I don't think there's a tabletop game I've played more intensely than Pandemic Legacy Season yes, 1. Yes, I knew it. It's yeah, great. yeah, yeah. When our gaming group sat down with this, I think we completed over three nights, and it was like power game after power game. <laughs> and... Uh, 
starting, but I got to say that starting with this game, I was not a huge fan of the uh, Pandemic original, uh, just mm. because it just seemed so formulaic and like I, you just knew what everyone else should do for their turn. But seeing the board game being written on, cards being literally ripped up by NATO was so shocking and radical that I completely flipped the switch for me on, on the Pandemic feel. Uh, it was my first real experience with a legacy game, and the next two seasons are definitely on my gotta play list. How about you, Nato? Um, I have an unusual pick for uh, my campaign game, and that's Thunderbolt Apache Leader by uh, DVG Games. The game itself is really fun, but it really shines when you do a campaign and you play uh, mission after mission uh, back to back. And the mechanics of how that all comes together is really fascinating. And it's really a, a compelling, compelling game. I really recommend it. Um, but for now, we're going to move on to narrative or storytelling games next. So the narrative storytelling games of all the genres, this is my favorite on the list. So I don't back too many games on Kickstarter because it's so easy to get sucked into overspending. But one that I don't regret at all is Avatar The Last Airbender, the role-playing game. So far, they've only sent out the PDF copies of this, but it is blowing my mind. I love everything about it. The story structures they've come up with are really a great foundation for the adventures. Character building, so much fun. It gets players into the world of Avatar. The play system is powered by the apocalypse. That suits my approach to role-playing games, namely one that simplifies outcomes and minimizes die rolling. So this is one that I really want to play a lot this year. Uh, how about for you, Cax? What narrative game tickles your fancy? Well, that's a great question. Uh, imagine you're given a newspaper, a phone book, and a map of Victorian England. Well, in Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective, that's exactly what you've got. Along, of course, with your stunning intellect, and maybe <laughs> it, maybe an assist from Sherlock, Watson, or Mycroft, if you like, as well. Uh, this is the perfect game for sitting around with some friends who are casual gamers, but still enjoy good storylines, reading, and a relaxing experience. How about yours, Nato? Um, well, I'm going to go old school for this one and choose uh, Ambush by Victory Games uh, back uh, from, from the 80s. And this is a Hollywood-style recreation of squad-level combat in Europe. Uh, it is very much rooted in um, Dungeons and Dragons, which uh, obviously was uh, a big sensation uh, then as now. And uh, it, it basically follows the adventures of uh, a squad as you play mission after mission. And you get to actually build their characters and, and, and tell a story of their entire campaign as you uh, play through the, uh, the different scenarios. And uh, there's lots of drama, lots of tension, and lots of, lots of excitement. I think it's a great game. So um, here's an interesting category for you, Flash. Modular board games. Ooh, yes. Well, for nostalgic reasons, I wanted to choose Survive Escape from Atlantis. I played that a lot with you as kids, Nato, and, and I love that game. But if I'm choosing a serious adult game, it has to be Twilight Imperium. It's the consummate game that blends elements from so many other games that I love, like Diplomacy, Puerto Rico, and Eclipse. The only downside is the playtime, so it doesn't make it to the table nearly enough. Cax, you're up for modular games. Yeah, and for my modular, I'm going with an oldie but a goodie, Mage Knight. I think this game was a true precursor to games like Gloomhaven and the like. It has similar mechanics, although it's not quite as epic. This game still is a ton of fun to play, though. You can scale the difficulty of the enemy as you like, and I love the co-op aspect of this game. Nato, what about you? For me, I would have to pick Spirit Island. Um, this is a, a really great game, tremendous replayability. There's so many spirits to uh, play as and to learn uh, their unique abilities. I think the theme and the gameplay is really, really unique in the, uh, in the board game world. And it's really just fun as a moving puzzle. It's how I see it. There's lots of moving parts, of course, but especially when you're playing uh, cooperatively with, uh, with some friends, it can be a real uh, fun challenge that way. So that's my pick for modular board games. Now, what about two-player only games, Flash? Well, I think my choice will be much lighter than both of your choices. It, this was almost a dead tie between Seven Wonders Duel and Battle Line. Battle Line's a great two-player game from top to bottom, but I'm going to choose Seven Wonders Duel because it feels more replayable, and I like how the game progresses in three different stages. After borrowing a friend's copy for almost a year, I dithered on whether to pay a ridiculously high sticker price for this game, and now that I finally bought it, despite the cost, I don't regret it at all. It's really a complete game for the compact box that it comes in. What's your favorite two-player game, Cax? Well, my favorite two-player game has to be Android Netrunner. 
Um, I absolutely love this game with its intense and high stress moments. It's asymmetrical play. You can play as the runner and try to crash the corp by stealing agendas or play as the corp and build ice walls and set up servers in order to score the same agendas the, the runner wants to steal. This is definitely a high adrenaline game and by far one that I played the most of any games on my shelf. If anyone has watched our content this year, NATO, I'm guessing they'll be able to guess what your favorite two-player game is. <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, I, I really had to go with Twilight Struggle here. It would be uh, very strange if I did not. Um, this game, if you are not aware of it, is a very uh, tense recreation of the Cold War. And I just find that the mechanics mesh together in a way that is endlessly interesting and very deep. So what about abstract games? Flash, what's your pick? I just got a copy of the new game 10, and this is a perfect mashup of two other games that really play well in social settings, Push and No Thanks. They're all like, you know, $10 games, but it's a sequencing game. It's accessible to any level of gamer. And what this one adds to the genre is a beautiful balance of auctioning and bidding, coin management, and a push your luck mechanic. My family instantly loved it, and I won't hesitate to pull it out with friends. What's your favorite abstract game, Cax? Well, for abstract, I had to go with Sagrada. Uh, I really love the beauty that this game offers. You're, you're tasked with completing a stained glass window, and true, it's not making wine, but uh, I've got to say that some of the masterpieces I've ended up with would uh, almost be fit for the Sistine Chapel. Well, okay, maybe not really, but uh, there's, uh, <laughs> there's just enough puzzle here to make uh, this game a ton of fun. Uh, one to certainly consider if you're looking for something abstract. We're under our final pick for this video with you, Nato. So the pick that I would go with is one that I usually go with when I talk about abstract games, and that's Blockus Duo. Um, Blockus Duo is a clean, a simple design. It is just a joy to play. Of course, it's perfectly balanced, and so the winner of the game is the one that's going to bring the most uh, tactical skill to the table. And I think it's just a great game. It's a lot of fun. You can play it in 5-10 minutes and then fire it up uh, right away uh, once again, and that's what I look for in any game. Wow. So that takes us from Twilight Struggle to Blockus Duo. Yes. <laughs> well done. <laughs> and everything in between. <laughs> oh, it's wonderful. <laughs> well, thanks so much uh, to the person watching the video. Please join the conversation. Let us know what games you would put in your top 10 for each of these categories. We always love hearing about games that we need to try next. And thanks so much for your time. 